When I go out to my mailbox or look at my email, the question kids ask me the most is, how do I get ideas for my books? So I want to tell you how I got the idea for The Mitten, because it's its 20th anniversary. I'm going to draw you a picture. It's going to be out of the book, and I'm going to make it like a little art lesson. And then I'll have a few words to say about your creativity. So when I draw my bear, he's going to be stuck in the mitten. I'm putting myself in the bear's place. He's stuck in the mitten. He can't move around because all the other animals are beside him. And then the mouse gets on his nose. So he's like perplexed. He's like, hey, wait a minute. This mouse is supposed to be afraid of me. Why is it on my nose? And I can't even move to swat him away. So he's a little bit... Uh, ang not angry, but agitated, and he's a little bit curious about what this mouse is doing there. And I'm going to try to put all those things into the picture. And I'm going to start by standing right in front, and I'm sorry you can't see at this first point, but the trouble is if I get on the side, it will, be, it will look all stretched because I'm doing it from the side. So the first, very first sketch I'm going to do from the front, and then I will move so you can see. And I'm going to, you know your shapes, triangle, circle, square... Somehow my bears often look like hedgehogs. I don't know how that happens. And I have a good, I'll, go, I'll tell you my bear experiences in a few minutes. Okay, now that's, an, that's all I need. Now, um, I, think about a circle. I'm going to draw it here. If you get home tonight and you want to try this with a pencil, I, I mean, I always start with pencil first, and then I can erase, and then I use my watercolors to go over it. But I have to admit to you, I could not do watercolors until I was at least in my 20s, because they are very hard to get the water and the color the right ratio. I would recommend colored pencils or markers, and I've got markers to do today. So here's the circle, and then here's a triangle. And this is the bear from kind of he's looking a little bit towards us, but mostly from the side. Here's the round head of the bear and then the triangle of his snout. And then I'm going to take a little bit away from the top and cut off the top of that triangle and then come in like this. And that's going to be the bear's face like that. So I'm going to do it up here now that I've done a little sketch for you to show you the basic uh, shapes. So here's his little forehead and he's covered with thick, furry, furry, shaggy fur. And his nose, which is very shiny and black and even has a shine mark on it because it's so, it's a little bit wet so he can smell properly. Bears have a pretty good sense of smell, I've heard. And there's his mouth and he's, I, mean, I haven't quite finished with the mouth yet, but it's look, it turned a little bit down as if he hasn't quite made up his mind about what he has got on his nose there. And then I've got to get in front for one second and do the eye. I think it's supposed to be about there. Now, I've just made a one round circle for his eye. That's the way I'm going to start. And I'm going to fill it all in black except for one little point at the top. And that's the sparkle in his eye. And if you look at your neighbor's eyes, you can see that you're, they reflect light. It's just, unless you're in a pitch dark room, you're always going to have like a little sparkle of light. And when you do a picture, that's my third helpful hint. If you put that little sparkle in the eye, you're, you're, uh, either an animal or a person will look more realistic if you do that because we have such reflective eyes. Now that's the pupil, which is the black middle part, and I'm going to have it aiming towards the nose, and then I make a smaller circle around it, and that will be the part that will be brown. So he, it makes him look like he's looking at his nose because that's where the, the mouse is going to be. Now I'm going to try to follow what I just said and pay most attention for his eyes. So the rest of the part will go faster, but this part takes a little bit of a while. Right around his eye, he's got a very thin rim of skin that has no fur on it. Most animals do. You can check out your dog or cat if you have an animal at home, and you'll see they have a little bit of uh, skin with no fur around it. And then now a bear does not have eyebrows like a human being does, but I want him to have the same kind of emotions as a human being. So I'm going to make a big bunch of fur up there kind of look like an eyebrow. And we call that anthropomorphic when we give the feelings of a human being and we put them on an animal. And people have told stories using animals for a long time. And I'm not sure why that is, but I think we just like to laugh at those animals. And it's easier to laugh at the animals than it is to laugh at people. Now, just with this one little line, that makes him look a slightly worried. And I know you guys over here can't see. But there's that little line right there. It makes him look worried. And that's, we're just so sensitive to the, those small nuances that it, it's, it, 
is worth your while to take time when you're, when you're working on the eye. And then I'm just going to make uh, some circles under his eyes as if he's looking a little bit bewildered or questioning, like someone said when I was doing that wondering look. He's looking a little bit questioning. And then this little fold right here is because his face is quite broad. And then he's got that nose that's kind of conical. And that kind of indicates that. And then his muzzle is slightly puffy. And I'll use my shading to make it look more puffy. Or I'll, that will be my, my intent. And then here is one ear that's kind of sticking out from the side. And thick, thick, thick fur. And then the other ear. And bears have little round ears. And I, when I first did the mitten, I wasn't really sure how to draw bears. I got some videos out and stuff. But we, in the summer, we live in Massachusetts in the eastern part. But in the summer, we go to the western part where there's some, well, we call them mountains. But anybody out west laughs at us because they're really just big hills. But when we first went out there 20 years ago, only if once in a while, fishermen would get up at like 5 o'clock in the morning and say, I saw a bear when I was fishing. And we'd go, oh, you saw a bear, you saw a bear. Well, now we have bears every day. And last summer, there was a mother. She was really big, and she would bring her three cubs, and they were all two-year-old cubs, so they were almost as big as her. They would come by almost every single day to our house. So I would look out the window and um, check those bears out and try to sketch them. And... Um, I would try to chase them away because I have a lot of chickens and those bears do not need to go in and, and sniff around my chickens. Although one time when I, I, was, I, I have some pots and pans and I just ch clang those pots and pans and, and chase the bear and say, bear, go back into the woods and stay away from my chickens and then they always do. <laughs> one, time, one time the bear growled at me that I hid in the chicken coat for a little until it went away. <laughs> But that was a different bear. That, it was a, a father bear, a boy. Okay, so here's some more thick fur all around the bear's face. <laughs> and now, you, did I tell you it takes an hour to do an inch when I'm doing my artwork? It takes a long time. When I do a book, it takes a year to do a book. I'm late on a book right now. So I'm just going to go my fast way with a marker so that you're not going to be here getting bored. And then here's the mitten. So you, I want you to picture all these animals are inside the mitten. You've got the owl and the badger and the mole and everything. And I'll just draw Hedgie because he's my favorite character putting his little nose up there. And he's kind of gleeful because he's saying to himself, well, that bear's, I'm usually afraid of the bear, but now he can't even do anything. He can't swat me because he's stuck in the mitten. So he's got kind of a little, what we call in our house, a grinchy grin. Very pleased with himself. And now it's time to color him in. And this is kind of where the fun starts because I'm going to use my markers. And a lot of times parents will say, my child is very talented at art. What kind of art material should I give them? And I, one of my answers is that and I, what I would do is give colored pencils, like with lots and lots of colors, but then give an electric pencil sharpener, because then whenever your uh, point gets dull, you can just go and you get a sharp point where you can do all your details, like around the eyes, but then you can do a, go sideways and do, uh, use the sh side of your pencil to do the shading. These are those markers that have one thick end and one thin end. And I always have to put the, t the tops on really tightly or they dry up. So here's the brown of the bear. Now, our bears in the Berkshires, they are black and very shiny. But the bear I made in the mitten is brown. And then I'm just scribbling in this brown color because I'm going to work on it a little bit more. Be because in nature, you very rarely find a color that's just right out of the crayon box or right out of the magic marker it's usually a blend of those colors, and that's what I'm going to do today. Even though it's very quick, I'm going to use a several shades of brown. And, you know, you can do that if you look at your own hair. If you just get in the mirror really close, you'll see that you don't have one color hair. You have lots of different shades in there. Some of us more than others. <laughs> so there's, there's Hedgie. has got, so that was easy enough. And then, let's see, the bears that I've been seeing in the Berkshires, they, their muzzles are this color. I, I think this one is called Mineral Orange. When I was little, I loved to read the colors on my crayon box. I like the color Chatrousse, which is yellow with a little bit of green. 
And I like the color magenta, which was pinky purple. And aqua, which is bluey green. Those are all really great colors. Now this is one called dark umber. And I'm just gonna go around the edge and I would call this shading. Because I'm going, I want him to look more round and you can tell me if it starts to happen. And you could do this even with a pencil. Is let's say you're drawing a fish. Just go around the edge, making it a tiny bit darker. And I'm using kind of feathering strokes so that there's not too big of a, a difference between the outside and the inside. And then here were some puffs of fur. And then right around his eye, I'm going to be a little bit more delicate and use the pointy end here to make him look like he's looking. And then right here where his muzzle is formed. And I think there's another place right there that would look good if I put a little bit of a darker. And then Hedgy has a dark around his eye. And then, oh, he's got a, he's got a kind of brownish eyes, this bear. But I'll leave a little white to make him look surprised. I should have left more white. If I had thought to bring my, my white out, I would have made that. I'd go over that and get a little bit more white. And then here's my gray. I'm going to do some more shading on his muzzle. Is he starting to look rounder? That's what my purpose is. I want him to look a little bit rounder. And so here's a little bit of a light gray. And I'm going to do that right around his muzzle. And make that look rounder. And I could go around this whole bear with my gray. And I think that will help the drawing a little bit. And this might be one of the times that I'd like to look at it in the mirror so I could get a different perspective. And here's the mitten. And then Hedgie's got gray ears. And then he's got gray back where his prickles come out. Oh, oh, I gotta do around his eye. That's gray. He's almost done. I think pretty much what's left is the mouse. And the mouse is gonna be a gray mouse. And we, have, we knew how to draw mice because last summer we had a mouse infestation. We had so many mice come into our house, we had to get have a heart traps. And what happened was, Joe would take the mice, oh, here it is, would take the mouse and put them in the woods. He would dry them in the car so they couldn't come back into the house. <laughs> and he would take my grandson, Patrick, who is nine, with him. And Pat, he, one day he had the mice in the mice trap, mouse trap and Patrick was in the front seat where the mouse was on the floor and he was kicking the mouse trap. And Joe took his old car that had a no top on it. And he said, Patrick, you know, if you kick that mouse trap, it could release the gate and the mouse could get out. And he said, he said, uh oh, pop. And then pretty soon the mouse just like ran out. He went, Joe's driving. He went up Joe's leg, <laughs> up his arm and right into his collar. But Joe, um, he has even flown an airplane. He has his pilot's license. So he knows that if there's kind of a problem, you have to just stick with what you're doing and keep everybody safe. So he just like kept driving. And finally, the mouse got pushed out and went right on the back of the car and into the woods as the car was moving. <laughs> so I knew how to, I would always take a peek at those mice. And I found out we had two kinds of mice, house mice and meadow mice. And this is a meadow mouse. The meadow mice have bigger eyes and they have um, short tails. And I'm going to use my artistic license and make this a uh, long-tailed mouse because I want to get, I want you to start thinking about how that um, bear would feel with this mouse on his nose. And it's kind of, that mouse is a little bit cheeky. He just jumps right up there knowing the bear can't do anything about it. And I told you about how I thought the animals would get into the mitten. Well, when I drew this picture, I knew instantly how the animals would get out of the mitten. And I thought about it because I was trying to think of how that bear would feel. Now, if I was a bear, and I was covered with thick fur, but the one place left on the bear that's not furry is this tender, tender nose. And if I had a mouse on it, on my nose, and I felt those little scritchy, scratchy feet, and those tickly whiskers, and that tail swishing back and forth, what would that would be kind of tickly, wouldn't it? And if something was tickling on your nose, wouldn't you want to 
sneeze. <laughs> and so that's how the animals get out of the mitten. And so here's my picture that's, that took, this would have taken a week to do. The, the mouse is on the bear's nose, and then you turn the page, and just like the young man in front said, there's the bear with his big sneeze, and he sneezes the animals up into the sky, and they get tossed and turned in all directions. And luckily, I have my borders because you can see in the next page, they all have happy landings in the soft snow. And there's Nicky, he can't believe his eyes, because a white mitten against the white snow would be very hard to find, but a white mitten against the blue sky, he went running towards it, and he catches it. And so then the last page shows when Nicky's home with his grandmother. Now, he's promised her he wouldn't lose his mittens. And he did not lose them, but one is very small and one is very stretched out. And only the person who has read this book knows exactly how that happened.